What's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. This Locked On Podcast recruiting episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, the college recruiting sponsor across the Locked On Pod- Locked On College Podcast Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. What better way to have a recruiting episode than having the recruiting um, analyst of Locked On Podcast Network, Brian Smith, on with me today. Brian, what's going on, man? It is my time of year. We're less than a month from National Signing Day. The portal's getting ready to open, and it's championship weekend coming up. Doesn't get any better than this. No, it doesn't. This is obviously some uncharted territory for Louisville fans, with this being the first ACC championship game that um, uh, the Cardinals will have um, – participated in since joining the conference brian um alongside being a uh recruiting analyst for locked on he also is a publisher for all hurricanes the sports illustrated site for miami and also uh, does some work for florida state as well so he is very familiar with the cardinals program been on the show once before but i'm exciting to i'm excited to talk uh recruiting with him brian the main thing for me and i honestly am extremely surprised by this debate even happening i felt like the uh, objective all year for Louisville was that they were going to go back to the portal to get a quarterback and allow Pierce Clarkson, Brady Allen more time to develop and not put um, a timeline on that right away. There's a lot of fans that are like, well, let's just let Clarkson have the reins. And I keep telling people that's not really the plan here. And you can tell by how um, frequently Louisville is being mentioned with some of these guys. Um, before we talk specific names, what is your take on this? destination for a quarterback in the portal overall or for Louisville for Louisville specifically two things you're you're right let's use Clarkson as an example how many sophomores do you think end up let's say in the top 30 or so quarterbacks in rating yards per pass etc in a year it's one or two right there's a magic number in football at the college power five level at minimum 400 passes before you're decent. Well, there's no way to get there without sucking. That's why everybody's trying to find quarterbacks in the portal. They don't want to go through it. You get fired, you have a really bad year. There's it's there's no magic elixir to get you to about 400 passes. Now, again, that's minimum. Right. Usually a guy's got to struggle for a year, and if you're bad at quarterback, your team's bad. So I think they should go portal. The other way to do it is for a kid to be in the system, and this is hard, and you hope for it. Hey, Brom, he's obviously a quarterback coach. Let's yeah. <laughs> Conservatively, he's one of the 10 best quarterback coaches in college football. I'll just leave whoever wants to rank him, that's their business. If they can get Clarkson and these guys to be in the system two or preferably at least middle of their third year before they take over, the chances of success exponentially change. Mm-hmm. Second year? Look at it this way. Not this season, but last year. The only two quarterbacks like in the top 25 of the rankings were two guys you might have heard of. A guy in L.A. that won a Heisman, then a guy down in Chapel Hill named Drake May. Everybody else was a senior, fifth-year senior. There's no shortcut. It's experience times a billion. So, yeah, it's not a good idea because the other problem, if let's say Clarkson was to get the job next year, if he fails, he might crush his confidence to the point he just bails. Then you're starting all over in another capacity. You don't have a transfer guy. Your depth chart's shorter. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's there's a lot of possible conundrums there. So right. if he's smart, he's cool with what if he's not cool with waiting through the second year and, and bomb systems harder because it's more pro-oriented, all the shifts and motions and all that, then it's he's not the guy anyway. I've told people this a million times. The answer isn't which one do you want on your depth chart? It's both every time. The transfer kid and the high school kid. The problem is one of them is going to leave. I'll take the more experienced guy. If the high school kid wants to leave, goodbye. That's just the way it is from now on. There is no friendly with this. There is no more development. And I know fans want to watch the kid. Those days are over. There's not going to be as much. Now, Brahm's got a better chance because he's he's proven. I mean, he won at Purdue. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Indiana. It's not easy to win at Purdue. (laughs) I mean, that program is godforsaken recruiting-wise, and he had some success. If he can do that there, he's going to get more players at Louisville. They'll be okay. This next year is kind of the bridge gap 
And we'll talk about those players in a second. But then in 25, it could be Clarkson or somebody else. That'll take care of itself. But you really need two years in this system to learn. And I'm guessing that you feel pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, I do. And and I think that you, you mentioned something. It's not for me one or the other. It's both. Because this is a program that over the past couple of years under Scott Satterfield, there was not much competition at the position. So I almost oh, feel like this is none. very – it's very <laughs> different for Louisville fans to sort of digest. And it's not a bad thing is what I'm trying to get across. And obviously what you're trying to get across as well is competition is a good thing. And if you bring in that transfer and Clarkson beats him out or Brady Allen beats him out, then great. Great. Whatever. There, you know, there's no agenda against the guys on the roster. You know, Jeff and Brian Brom see these players practice every single day. If they're going to the portal for a quarterback, then I, I personally I'm going to trust them because of their track record with quarterback. 100%. And I feel like that is maybe it's not necessarily a destination that you look at across college football and say, well, it's a top tier destination. But I think that it, it has its glamour with respective quarterbacks a, across the country. Do you kind of feel the same way with the pro style offense, with the schedule being a little bit easier than maybe some of your powerhouses? so to speak? I think it's for a slightly different reason, and that's we'll talk about it in a second. But, like, I know Van Dyke well from covering him. If you want to get to the NFL, you want to be in a system that can be convenient for that and a coach that's proven. They have both. It wouldn't matter if it was Anchorage, Alaska. The, the line to get into the NFL to be a quarterback is long, and the path is narrow. So yeah, you got to go where that's at. I'll just be blunt. I know fans get really angry at this, but this is true of every single program, Notre Dame to USC to Miami, everywhere else. Kids pick schools for coaches, not the letter on the polo, not the moniker. And I know people are throwing things at their screen. Too bad. That's the way it is. They pick coaches, not programs, especially the elite kids. That's what they all want to go to the NFL. How do I get there? Exactly. They don't care about the program. Braum is such a good quarterback coach. It's ironic because obviously it's the most important position. You get the quarterback. Well, guess what? Receivers are more likely to come. Offensive tackles. Well, they got a first round pick at quarterback. I want to go block for him. It mm -hmm. works itself down the road. So you can call it whatever you want, but Louisville football has a chance to ascend because of the coaching staff. That's bottom line, brother. I definitely agree with that. And what I try to tell uh, Cardinal fans when they send me uh, screenshots or links to tweets. Oh, hey, this guy's in the portal. Should we go after him? What I try to get across is that I feel like the majority of the time, and you can back this up, if a guy's entering the portal, it's with the destination already known in mind. And Tyler Van Dyke has been a name that has gotten discussed, um, but some other names that could potentially that at least have been thrown out there with association to Louisville. Will Howard is a name from Kansas State. Cam Ward has at least 10 very highly um, offerable suitors out there, um, if you believe the reports. Are there any other names that you feel like at this point that you could say, if it's not Van Dyke, Louisville could look in this direction? I believe, if I just saw my phone correctly, Riley Leonard's going into the portal, which that's not a shock. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not as high on him as some others because he needs more accuracy and stuff. But there it is again. If you're going to play in the NFL, I don't give a uh, – you know what? You have to be able to be accurate. Or are you going to go play for a run pass guy? If you're already – I mean, he's an athlete. That's not in question. Or are you going to go somewhere and refine your passing skills? Mm -hmm. I mean, if Leonard really wants to play at the highest, why wouldn't you think about Wivo? That should be at least a consideration, in my opinion. There are only four or five of these guys. Like Sark has a guy at Texas. That's not an option. Louisville needs one. There's only a handful like Jeb Fit, the guy at Arizona can definitely coach quarterbacks, but they got a quarterback. There's only a handful. Louisville should be, if these kids are smart, on a very, very short list. Winnard, I've heard Auburn, Notre Dame, different schools, all schools that need quarterbacks. Louisville should be in that boat. If it's not, that's on Riley, not, not Louisville. I, I agree there. And do you get the sense before we start to discuss uh, Tyler Van Dyke, a, a player that you covered, do you get the sense now? I mean, transfer portal times, it's so much uncharted territory that we're still just trying to navigate and see how things are going to work. 
is it more beneficial for Louisville to address the portal quickly when it comes to a quarterback so they're not left in um, a spot to where they're maybe on the outside looking in, they miss on their top guys, and then you're having to kind of piece things together? Or does it make sense to play the waiting game a little bit? Or does it matter if you know there's already – back channeling happening throughout college sports you already answered it <laughs> there i mean I'll, I'll i'm not going to get into names schools positions there are players being lured into the portal that had no intentions of it sure and i'm not talking about for 100k that's chicken fee compared to what i'm talking about yeah i mean that's people uh, people talk about tampering obviously it's it's almost it's out in the open rampant isn't even remotely where we're at. I, I mean, it, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, you know what I'm saying? I mean, chances are it is a duck. But one thing, one of the main reasons I wanted to bring you on the show, Brian, was to talk specifically about Tyler Van Dyke. TVD is a name that has been talked about for the past 48 to 72 hours, and Louisville fans have had very mixed reactions. And we're going to talk about what those reactions are here in just a moment when we, after we talk about our friends over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts. For your ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time where you get your money back. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Continuing on along in this uh, special Locked On recruiting episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast with the um, recruiting expert of Locked On, Brian Smith. Brian, you covered Tyler Van Dyke in his time at Miami. 2021, he looked like he was poised to be an absolute phenom. Mario <laughs> Cristobal comes in. He battles injuries. He's getting benched time and time again at different points. He has other times where he looks solid. I feel like for Louisville fans, we just don't know how to dissect what a possible addition of Tyler Van Dyke to this program would mean. I'm going to give the timeline for you and for people that don't know. I believe it was the last six or seven games, 21. He wasn't good. He was the best quarterback, arguably, in college football for about a half a season. It was just insane. He came in after an injury. Everybody's like, well, who's this guy? He had at a six games like four over three or over 200, two over 300 yards. It was like 14 touchdowns to two pit. It was just insane because nobody starts like that. Right. Remember me talking about you need like 400 yeah. passes? Mm -hmm. He did it just the opposite. But now he gets this year, he started out, I believe it was 12 to one. He had the highest rating by like PFF. Then they played, and it, it, one of those games was against AM. He ate AM's lunch. And they got NFL guys all over. He destroyed them. But they play man defense, and their corners are iffy. They played high risk and got smoked. Miami's got some receivers. Goes into the ACC, and they start playing shell, cover three, cloud, sky, all these generic defenses trying to make him dink and dunk, make him think after the snap, changing things. And the other team found the ball a lot. He was throwing late down the middle, which is horrific. Mm -hmm. Last year, I don't really count it because they had a horrific offensive line. He just got beat to death. They got five guys up front this year. All of them will get paid in some capacity to play. Really good line. Mm -hmm. But when he's got time, he's still throwing to the wrong team. He gets impatient. He hates being checked down, Charlie. You need to do it a little bit. Second and six is better than the other team having first ten. So he ends up with 12 picks this year. All but one of them were like in a five. It was like five games, 11 picks. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. That's, that's JV numbers at a bad high school. Yeah. So cannon for an arm, 6'4", 6'5", 230, nice guy. I met him. He's a nice guy. Everybody likes him. Very team-oriented guy, and he's a big play. But the question is really simple. Would he take to Brahms coaching? Because the system is great. The fit, as far as what Louisville does with the tight ends and all that, like the one knock on Miami's offense in their tight end room, their, their best guy's been hurt forever. They only throw to the receivers. Well, Louisville finds a way to scheme open guys that are pretty mediocre. 
they don't have like Notre Dame's tight ends or whatever, but they, you know, against Miami, they hit like the guy in the back of the end zone. I don't even know who that guy was. They, they figure it out. That yeah, would be an advantage for him. Quarterback. <laughs> yeah, that that's way. what I mean. Yeah. And they run the ball well, like Miami. I think Tyler could transition to that. The final piece, though, is that turnover. Can he make him more patient? Because mm-hmm. everything else says he could throw 35 touchdowns next year. But the key is Louisville's got to go get that big play receiver, too. Miami's got dudes at receiver. That is not in question. Oh, yeah. Their, their number one receiver has more yards than Keon Coleman. Yeah, Restrepo is is a beast. Well, the, the kid I'm talking about is not even it's Jacoby George. He oh, like big play. He's their big play. I mean, they got three guys that will go to NFL training camps. Restrepo is just the guy who who tore Louisville up. He's that for the reason. He's Tyler's best buddy, too. That kind of yeah, works. I knew they were roommates. Alex, you know, Alex Dono came onto the show, or we had that locked on um, podcast crossover, but. I try to get a grasp or a pulse on what the fan base that a certain player played for beforehand, what their um, you know thought process was with that player entering the portal. Now, sometimes that can be dangerous because there's a lot of bitterness at times, oh. et cetera. It's really hard to separate, you know, facts and truth from you know BS and fluff. But it feels like, you know, would a scheme change fit here? For TVD, because obviously we talk about Brahms' system, but when it comes to Mario Cristobal developing quarterbacks, doesn't necessarily have the greatest track record in doing mm-hmm. so. Back from his Oregon days with Justin Herbert, do you think that some of TVD's shortcomings were because of that system, or was it mainly because of that indecisiveness and impatience with him in the pocket? In twenty-two, they had a terrible coordinator, so that didn't help, and they had a terrible offensive line. Mm-hmm. Catastrophe. I know some of the people around the program, they completely upgraded up front and it made it easier to be in second and five. Look, Mm. John Elway never did well in second and nine either. Okay. Not consistently. They've got a better coordinator now and things started going good. The end of the day though, it was about him just being impatient. I don't know how you grade that moving forward because he's a veteran. He's in his fourth year. That's on him. Yeah. And the quarterback, Coach is also the OC. He was at West Virginia in 14 when they just crushed all the records. He was in the OC that year. Right. He was at Houston the last few years, killing it. Mm -hmm. This is a Van Dyke thing. So I I think Brom would be able to scheme him open, some shorter plays that would help, some over routes, different things. It's a little different. But again, it's still pass friendly with play action, which is similar to what Shannon Dawson runs at Miami. It just comes down to Tyler. I don't know how you answer that because it's not a matter of experience. He's shown it sometimes. He's just inconsistent. Right. But the last two games, again, he was on again. Like, he played well against Louisville. He played well at Boston College. When he's on, he's good. Yeah. I, I don't know how you project it. I really don't. Last question about Tyler Bryan, and this is really um, – might not necessarily be a fair question to you, but I'm going to ask it anyway because there's so much more context. Assuming that Louisville goes to the portal – and at the very least addresses their other needs, and it's a team sport. But what do you feel as – assuming maybe they had a team like they do around him, like around they ha- like they have around Jack Plummer right now, what's a ceiling with a guy like Tyler Van Dyke behind or under center for Louisville? Oh, you can win 10 games next year. No question. He's an NFL talent. That's not a, that's not debatable. I, I get to see him at field level from a few feet away. It's, you know, yeah. the eye test from field level is different. Gun. I mean, he can have a guy in his face, do everything physically wrong with his delivery, and he just overpowers the ball and gets it there. Now, that sometimes gets him in trouble, too. Which, you know, Jeff George probably has about the strongest arm I've ever seen. He used to throw off his back foot. Not many people can do that. Right. But at the same time, he can do some of those things. With Louisville's running game and with the way they continue to figure out ways, it seems no matter who the coach is, they run the ball well. If they can get him in play action, Mm-hmm. He could throw for 3,000 and 30 touchdowns next year, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. But he's got to make that commitment to be more patient. Sure. I, I couldn't say that 50 times and it'd be enough. He's not patient enough. Yeah. He tries to go down the field, and the ball goes the other direction. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, it's not a done deal, but this is the one name at this point outside of Cam Ward. Cam Ward obviously has a million and one suitors. Yeah, that who knows where he's going? Portal. Who knows where he's going to go? But it seems like at this point in time, 
Van Dyke seems to be the most realistic situation at the moment. And if there comes word that he's going to visit, then there's going to be a good chance that I feel like Louisville closes this deal. Uh, but we're going to put transfer portal talk to the side for the moment of talk about it's never too early to talk about um, 2025 recruiting. Louisville got their first commitment in the class, and it is a quarterback that um, – People around Louisville um, might not necessarily know, but the coaching staff extremely familiar with both vice versa. We'll talk about uh, Mason Mims here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Two reasons. Why I love prize picks so much, number one, it is the combo projections. For me, I could go with LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made and receptions. And the number one is the reboot policy. I hate injuries in sports, especially when I am uh, doing daily fantasy sports. If a player gets hurt in the first half, doesn't come back in the second, that player gets rebooted. It's the only platform out there with an insurance policy. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Using the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Final segment of this recruiting episode of the Locked On Global Podcast. Brian Smith, the recruiting analyst for Locked On Podcast Network, is joining me today. Brian, it's tough to talk about. Um, non-senior recruiting classes in my opinion because of how much things change especially in one year um not to mention the way the portal is going it's just recruiting is it's just all over the place as you probably know but Louisville's got their first 2025 commit Mason Mims uh, ranked just inside of the top 500 in the class according to 24 7 sports.com from oxford alabama plays at a pretty solid high school uh, a pretty solid high school down in alabama overall thoughts on what you see on film from him yeah he's an east alabama kid right off i-20 i know it well it's a program that auburn alabama and georgia recruit so that puts things in perspective oxford high school has always had players it's maybe an hour at the most from birmingham so as a player, there were two or three things that I thought stood out. Number one, he's a big kid for junior in high school. He's listed at 6'4", 220. He's at least, at least 6'3". And number two, he's pretty adept with some of the technical things in the pocket, avoiding the rush, which is really rare for a high school kid, let alone an underclassman. He'll step up, he'll sidestep, et cetera, and do it pretty darn well and avoid somebody and make a throw. Sometimes he'll even make the throw and take the hit. Really rare for a high school kid. Usually they do not do well with that. The other thing that's interesting about him, he'll change his arm angle. Sometimes it'll be over, sometimes it'll be three-quarter, and he can still get it to different spots on the field, sure. even down the field. The only thing that I don't know, and this is typical of a highlight tape, he throws mostly mid-level and down the field on his highlights. I'd like to see what he does when the defense does well against his cover or his receivers. Is he like kind of like Van Dyke? Is he willing to hit the check down? Most high school kids hate the word check down. <laughs> And that's what gets you in trouble. You got to take second and six sometimes. Other than that, he's got the arm. He can move. He'll take off sometimes. And he's got the frame to handle the hits. This is a good pickup by Brahman Oliva. I find it interesting that you mentioned the, the short routes because that is one thing that obviously highlight tapes don't always tell the full story. But I kind of uh, I kind of gravitated toward as well. The main thing that I was impressed with, and I know it's the high school level, but completing over 70% of that's his ridiculous. passes. Yeah. Um, especially in the area that he's playing, had about 2,500 yards to go, 28 touchdowns to three interceptions. In terms of the talent that he's going up against, sometimes it's hard to tell with classifications. Just kind of paint the picture because you're familiar with this area. What is the talent like that he's going up against on a weekly basis? State of Alabama, I believe, is number six per capita sending players in the NFL. There was a reason Alabama and Georgia – or in the playoffs. There's a reason Clemson recruits Alabama. There's a reason Auburn, even though they got all those schools around them, will soon be a top 10, 15 team again. It's loaded. So there's no problem with going up against the talent. Um, I'm getting ready to move up to that area. Every other school's got a kid. I mean, Birmingham per capita is as good a city as there is in the country for talent. 
That's that's Alabama's backbone. What does that tell you? So yeah, he, he's not, not an issue with talent. Last question I got for you, Brian. Um, one way that at least me personally, because I obviously am not seeing a lot of these players play in person, and I don't like to take everything I see off of a huddle tape as gospel. I, I try to at least base it upon interests from other schools, specifically offers in that matter. Looking at his offer sheet, you have a couple of, of Power Five offers there: Vanderbilt, West Virginia, uh, Georgia Tech, Pittsburgh, but none of really. Not many big schools at this point in time. Do you feel like that that is more so an indication of bigger schools taking a little bit longer to get in the game when it comes to recruiting these type of kids? Or what? what's kind of the, the holdup with some of these offers? Is it just purely timing with him being a 2025 guy? That's the biggest because of the portal and how sped up it is to win. Think about this. Mississippi State fired their coach after 10 games. Yeah. Do you want to wait to develop a high school kid? Yeah. Goes to show you. That's the number one problem. That's not Mason Mim's fault. Sure. Brahm, on the other hand, it's his alma mater. He knows he's a good coach. He's a quarterback guy. They're not firing him. Sure. He can do this every year. He's got a huge advantage. Two, that area, and I know this from a kid that ended up signing with Georgia, but there was a player from Phoenix City a couple of years ago. He didn't have as many offers as he should. He was arguably the best corner in the country. Why? He's from Alabama. Nobody thinks he's going to leave. That state, nobody nobody wants to recruit against Alabama and Alabama. If they offer a kid, they just assume they're going to go there. And they're probably right. So <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, uh, the other thing, I know a little bit about Georgia Tech staff. Quarterback evaluations there will be good. That they've offered, that's a good sign. Uh, they took a kid that Texas A&M ruined, and he goes at Georgia Tech, and he's really good. Same player, different coaching staff. What's different? He was coached. So that's why Jimbo is unemployed right now, by the way. Yeah, unemployed with 77 million reasons yeah. why to not. Yeah, not give me started on that crap. <laughs> but, that, I pre Brian, I appreciate you hopping on to this recruiting episode of the show. Be sure to follow all of Brian's work, um, even if – Obviously, if you're listening to this, you're a Louisville fan. But if you want to get to know a little bit more about Louisville's opponent this upcoming weekend, Brian does a great job of covering the Seminoles of Florida State as well. Um, that's going to wrap up this episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.